prostate cancer, so we have a man who had benign prostatic hyperplasia and poor urine stream and low back pain as well. So notice from the scenario, with low back pain, you might be suspecting that this patient might have some sort of bony mets, all right? Bony mets, and that's why we have back pain. So in this particular scenario, we need to focus on how to take a biopsy uh, from the prostate and whether there is any complication of this biopsy and also why do we do it in a different way or in a certain way. We also need to talk about a tumor marker that is known in the prostatic uh, cancer, which is prostatic specific antigen. And we need to know that despite it's called prostatic specific, that it's not very specific. And this is a misnomer as well. And we also need to talk about a little bit about the bony metastasis. And finally, we need to cover as well the grading system and um, um, uh, also about the, the receptors that is found in the tumor and the role of androgen in treating prostatic carcinoma. So the first question is asking, how do we take a, a biopsy from the prostate? So obviously the, you will have the, uh, the, ure the urethra and the uh, prostate just in front of a rectum in a male patient. So we can do it under ultrasound guidance, which is the normal protocol. So we'll go by the ultrasound through the rectum. So it's a transrectal ultrasound guided, and you can go from the probe through the urethra and take multiple samples. We usually take around 12 samples from the prostate, and they're usually taken from the, the mid-sagittal plane in the apical and the mid-gland and the base as well. So we're trying to take 12 samples. And the reason we do that, we take like very high amount of sample because the probe is a small and you will usually take a small amount every time you try to take some samples. And it's usually mixed with other tissue as well, which could be normal. And the malignant change usually subtle. And that's why we need to take multiple samples to make the, our scoring uh, system. And the benign condition can be easily confused with malignancy. So again, we do the, uh, the biopsy with transflectoral ultrasound guidance. We take multiple biopsies, around 12 samples, from the parasagittal plane or the midline, which is apical and mid loop, and also the base of the loop as well. Okay, and you can also move to the peripheral zone as well to take some samples out of the 12 samples. What are we going to do with these 12 samples? We're going to start by grading them, looking at all of them, and see the two most common structure, and then. So two most common structure or the two most common samples, and then we we'll start to grading them from one to five. And the sum of both of them will be the whole score of this type of cancer. And this is called by Gleason score, all right? And that's a question that's coming in here. So the question is asking about the prostate cancer grading system. It's called the Gleason score. So we're gonna grade the tumor from two to 10, and the pathologist allocate number uh, 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 or from one to five to the most common histological pattern in the specimen. So yeah, like we said, we took, I mean, actually this could be from two to 12 because we took 12 samples and then we grade each the two most common samples from one to five and the sum of these will be the Gleason score. So um, how to differentiate between the prostate and the rectum cancer from a needle biopsy? Usually we do something called immune histochemistry which is famously used in all the pathology parts in here. The gene mutation in prostate cancer is something called, it's quite difficult to remember that to be honest, but it's TPRSS2, ETS fusion gene, and P13K AKT signaling pathway. The PSA is not really re re reliable, and we'll mention that prostatic specific antigen, it is not a specific or not that specific. It's quite a useless test, and uh, um, because it is an organ-specific rather than tumor-specific, can be increased in many conditions, and this includes benign prostatic hyperplasia, even regular sexual intercourse, or regular exercise can even increase the prostatic-specific engine. That's why we should not rely on its results to diagnose the prostatic carcinoma. And also, the test to, we mentioned earlier that the patient had some bone pain, all right? So we can do alkaline phosphatase, which will tell us if this patient might have metastasis and it will be significantly be elevated. We know that bony metastasis can be one of two things, whether it's a scler sclerotic uh, metastasis 
or lytic metastasis or lytic lesions. Lytic can have a very wide range of types of cancer, including breast cancer and also the ovarian cancer the, um, and any other type of cancer really, thyroid and uh, renal and so on, can cause lytic lesions and multiple myeloma as well. But in a sclerotic lesion, it's usually the prostate. Sclerotic means you're doing bone deposition and lytic lesions you're doing basically bone resorption, all right? So here it's osteoclastic activity, and here it's osteoblastic activity, all right? So the biopsy, there is one thing that we are really afraid of taking away. So we talked about the biopsy very quickly, and we know how to take it, and the site, and it's under ultrasound. We take 12 samples. We explained why we take 12 samples and how to score it. But here comes the role of the complications from uh, this biopsy. The main thing is actually introducing an infection by a gram negative uh, um, uh, such as E. coli. So UTI is the most feared thing and the patient might have temperature and increased white blood cells and neutrophils. And the commonest organism is E. coli. So when we're assessing the tumor, basically like we explained before, we look for the gross pathology and also for the microscopic picture. And one of the things that we look for is presence of any receptors. And this is particularly important in breast cancer, if you remember that. So for example, the estrogen and progesterone and also the HER. So here it's quite similar. The receptors in prostate cancer could be androgen. So the tumor could be dependent on the androgen production, like, such as testosterone, and will uh, gain its ability to grow from this androgen. So sometimes we do something called androgen deprivation of this tumor because the tumor growth will be dependent on this androgen production. So uh, doing orchidectomy, orchidectomy, bilateral orchidectomy, will significantly decrease the production of androgen and consequently the tumor can decrease in size. And the androgen or the testosterone is produced by leading cell from the testis. Thank you very much. That covers the prosthetic specific androgen and neck, uh, sorry, the uh, prosthetic carcinoma. And the next part will be the testicular cancer or the testicular lymphoma as well.